studying a fighter does not prep you for the fighter or the fight. So welcome back, everybody. We had a little technical difficulties. So we're back. And the topic of the discussion at the moment was once you found out who he was fighting, he segued and conversated pretty much on I don't study for fights, fighters. You know, you get ready to adapt and do all the tool sharpening. What did your regimen consist of when you go to the gym prepping for a fight and especially a fight that's life changing, like being on the undercard of a Mike Tyson fight? What does that camp look like for you, knowing that this is a moment that can change your life for the rest of your life? So, um, like you said, that uh, Bernard Harkins lived in the gym. I live in my gym. Uh, me and my dad own the gym, so I pretty much live here from 8 a.m. to 8 at night. Um, I'm here from I'm here morning to night. And um, so I usually uh, I wake up in the morning. Uh, I come to the gym and I go for a run. Uh, when, once I go to for my run, I come back to the gym, obviously, and I, I do my calisthenics, my ads, my pushups, my pull ups, all my muscle work. And then um, I take a rest for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and during, during the rest of the day, I'm doing personal training, uh, running errands, doing stuff like that, rehydrating, yeah. um, getting my nutrition in. Um, and then in the afternoon is when I, I train, my boxing training. And um, that's when my dad comes in and uh, we get a, a training session. Usually training session with us is usually two and a half hours to three hours. Mm -hmm. And that, consi that consists of uh, hitting the bag, double end bag, shadow boxing mix all, all that kind of stuff it, it changes up every day because we do different things obviously yeah um and sprinting also sprinting sprinting is a huge thing and i, I believe it's a huge thing in the boxing yeah. game uh absolutely not a, I, I know a lot of amateurs don't do it and uh that's why that's where i learned uh the sprinting it was a big thing because you need those spurs where you need to go burst for energy and um that's that's where that sprinting comes in yeah and um we do a lot of sprinting here and we do a lot of different types of sprinting mm -hmm. uh and high, and high cardio things so yeah that's, that's pretty that's pretty much what the the camp consists of my dad makes the uh the schedule for us so uh once you come once i come in the morning i just look at the schedule and figure out what i'm doing that day and um, yeah continue going on with my day that's a big thing right there and when it comes down to sprinting a lot of people don't realize what does it do what actually is sprinting for so when it comes down cardiovascular development training and enhancing what we call the oxygen levels the blood needs to flow through the body it can only flow through the body so much so i'm going to give you guys a briefing on what that means the, the heart can pump x amount of blood through the body per minute there's an average for everybody for every body type let's just say the average man walking around who goes to the gym every day it could pump approximately 38 to 40 liters of blood and then you have someone like a russell westbrook kind of guy uh manny pacquiao whose heart's able to pump 52 liters of blood per minute and then you have someone who does extreme sports like Lance Armstrong, whose heart has been calculated and recorded at doing 92 liters of blood through the body. You're talking about liters of blood that the heart can do. And that's called VO2 max. That's what that's equivalent to the amount of blood that your body can pump. So when the blood is pumped through there, it's recycling oxygen at the same time. So when you do sprints, you're working on your VO2 max, expanding your heart and your valves so that you can do it. So there's a combination of things that you add around your sprints. And we got a program, it's called Science of the Run. Everything I do is based upon any science. But it shows, even if you're an amateur, how your running week and your cardiovascular week should look. Nothing more, nothing less. Don't overthink it. The science and the data has already been proven. All you have to do is take care of your body and stuff. So I just wanted to make sure I elaborate on what you're saying because your, your dad's doing a magnificent job 
keeping you conscious you're never too young to get the heart right and stuff so that's good stuff so you find out you're gonna fight this guy you're in camp you're doing your stuff you're prepping for whatever will come what was the first moment that you were in the same vicinity and room with mike tyson and you got an opportunity to see him and roy jones and what was your reaction when you did get to see two legendary fighters and one just total mogul <laughs> so um my first time seeing them i was uh, i was walking down to uh, the mock weigh-ins and um yeah actually it was my first time seeing uh, mike i already had seen jones yeah but like i said um i had said in the interview before i went i flew out to uh, california um i said i wasn't gonna let the let the starstruckness uh get to me <laughs> so I live by, I, I mean, I, I live no. by that word. I, I, I didn't, yeah. I didn't let it get to me. I, I, I walked by them. I nodded my head at them. So, so what's up? And I kept going as, as I am. I'm a fighter too. So yeah. I'm not going to look at, I'm not going to, I know where they yeah. have been and I want to be there one day. So, and um, I'm not going to look at them as gods because I know I can get there. So I'm not going to go, Oh my God, look, it's this guy. And I'm going to go up to him. What's up? How you doing? Nice, nice meeting you. Continue with my day. So yeah. That's how I did it. Then after the fight and all that stuff, that's when I was like, yo, I'm a huge fan of you guys. Oh, this, that, this, that. Pay homage. Yeah. Never be too big to pay homage. That exactly. was not what I was going to say. Uh, because what you're going to experience, they experienced it for you. So now they can put down bricks and stones to pave that way. So I, I let fighters know. If you're ever going back and forth with someone who's already done it, that's crazy. Pay homage mm -hmm. because you have no idea what they could, the the time that they can cut off of your journey so it'll be shorter and you can get further. And take the time to pay homage. And, hey, I love to bend your ear is a good statement to say to someone who's done it for 25, 30 plus years because they're going to give you something that's going to change the direction of that journey even when you're being guided well it's never ever a bad idea to say i love to be in your ear because they want you to say that they don't know how they wanted to sound but for them then they start locking in on you and they start really paying close attention so just remember that little nugget that's a skill communication and, and, and that little nugget I did bend uh, Roy Jones' ear after the fight. Um, actually, we were on the same in the hotel room. We were on the same floor, and I seen him walking over to his room. Yeah. And I asked him, and I asked him because I was walking to the, uh, the elevator. I asked him, "Are they open? I get a picture with you?" He goes, "Yeah, yeah, come on." He, yo, he he invited me into his room. I went to his room, and I sat. I was in his room for a good 10, 15 minutes talking with him and stuff. Beautiful. Um, it, it was a, it was a great feeling, and uh, the the, yeah. the the stuff I got off of him was great. Yeah, it's good stuff. Man got a lot to share. He's seen some stuff. And when you can Definitely. feel that energy off of him and you can really experience that, man, nothing you can do in camp can, can supersede that. So I'm glad you took that liberty and did that because you, you appear to be very mature. Your dad's right there with you. So that's always a beautiful thing. They, they sacrifice so much to make sure that what you are doing, that you, you are light years above and in front of everybody in your age category so all right you see the guy you see the contract sign you're going to the fight well the way in take us back to the way in how was the weight cut uh the weight cut was great honestly this is probably uh hold up all right explain to people what is a great weight cut <laughs> explain it <laughs> don't just blow smoke you on the fight show <laughs> er. so, yo no so honestly honestly this is like the greatest cut i've ever had in my life uh, <laughs> All right. so All right. explain that you, so usually usually when i fight yeah i'm right i'm right there just making weight and um this fight i may wait i was on weight a week before the fight okay. um I was walking around wow. at one. I was walking around at 129, 128. After after a training session, I'll be at 126, 125. So I was like, I'm happy. And I was eating regularly. I was eating everything I could eat. 
And I was like, all right, um, okay. I'm good. So uh, I flew out Thanksgiving. And um, so, I, I, so the day before I flew out, Wednesday, Wednesday, uh, my mom made me a turkey dinner. She made me a Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, so I had the stuffing. I had the mashed potatoes. I had the turkey. I had everything, rice, everything you can think of. And I had just got home from the gym, and I weighed 124. Wow. I was, I, Metabolic rate, yeah. And I've never weighed – well, not never. I can't say never. I haven't weighed 124 since 2015 Olympic trials. Wow. So – Wow. I was just like, wow, what's going on, whatever. Bro. So I ate my food, boom. I woke up in the morning to fly out, and yeah. uh, I, I, ste I stepped on the scale. I was 126. I was like, perfect. All right. Yeah. So I, I ate in the airport. I, on my way there, I had a meal, and I got I landed in L.A. Um, I did a little training session in my hotel room, mm -hmm. and I stepped on the scale Friday morning, and my scale said I was 125.9. So I was like, oh, perfect. Wow. Just may wait. Wow. And wait and, and wait ins within a few days and a few hours. So I'm like, I'm not gonna eat anything or drink anything. I'll be okay. Wow. That's so beautiful. walking walking down to weigh ins. I uh, walking down to weigh ins. I'm, like, right, I'm good. I see Jones. I see Jones. I said what's up to him, boom. And I go I go to weigh ins. I stepped wow. on this I stepped on the scale. It said I was one twenty four point four. <laughs> so <laughs> yo I don't know if my scare was wrong or their scare was wrong, but nah. I was happy. See the 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 controlled. I'm gonna elaborate. It's called controlled nervous energy, where your heart is a little more involved in your, you know, preparation mentally. And when you get to a certain age, like me, it's it's called anxiety, but it's not negative, and it's not like you're you're freaking out. It's just excitement. It's a big deal. You can't look at it as anything, but you belong. So you start, it either traps your weight and you gain more or you gain, you lose weight. So that's how it impact, impacted you. And I, I explain things to people from a medical standpoint, you know what I'm saying? So they really can understand the human body is tricky. And the more about it, you know, like the greats, like Archie Moore. So if you don't know a lot about Archie Moore, you got to do your research on Archie Moore. He was basically a physiologist of the body. He understand every facet of the body and which made him so difficult to win against inside of the ring. Even when he was at a very old age, he was so conscious of the body. That's why he gave a lot of these pearls to people like Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, Tommy Brooks, and the list goes on and on his downline of trainers that, that he, he groomed and fighters that he groomed to become world champions and moguls in the sport. So with that being said, it's good to that you're conscious because you seem to be really conscious about your awareness of training. So tell me this, what is your vice? You know, my guys, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Uh, one of my fighters, we were getting, we were towards heading towards camp. I mean, the way ends probably like in two weeks and he had been doing all right. And he was like, well, we went out to eat at lunch and my uncle always wanted to go to this place called Mayflower. They serve fish and, you know, you know, fried fish, uh, <laughs> baked potatoes, fries, <laughs> but you know, it's, yeah. it's a franchise in, down here in the South. So we went and sat down. So my guy was like, yeah, coach, uh, the the waitress was like uh so what do you want he was like uh, i'll get flounder and uh he was like well hell coach since you're here i'm gonna go ahead and get the fries and i looked at him i was like because i'm here you're gonna get fries man you've been getting fries anyway yeah like, you ain't <laughs> just getting fries because i'm here don't play me and i mean we all fell out i didn't laugh then but after the fact when i tell the story i'm like can you believe this dude in his next fight, he was 11 pounds overweight the day before weigh-in. And I said, I'm a, I'm a, first I'm going to kill you. But when I bring you back to life, I'm <laughs> going to make you lose all 11 pounds. And we lost 11 pounds that night. Now, I don't know if you ever want to be in front of me and you 11 pounds overweight, but we're going to get it off by all means necessary because you got to get there. And it was an ESPN fight, so... It's so important, man. But I know all fighters got vices. His was French fries. 
it didn't catch up with him that time but it caught up with him the next time what's yours <laughs> you got to one be, to be to Don't be completely lie. honest yeah soda <laughs> oh my god the creme de la creme of junk <laughs> yeah yeah but you burn it but just be careful man because man when you one day it just ah uh, it just will happen like that thing yeah. won't cooperate and it'll be because of the details so just remember to keep playing paying attention like bernard hopkins i always use it bernard as an example because he was the prime example of being on weight living around weight all my fighters stay within six pounds four to six pounds at the beginning of camp because i said this is not personal training this is not the the biggest loser i'm not <laughs> here to make you lose weight so yeah. if in the in our training that we use for our guys will make you trim and lean and optimize your muscles not get them big and stuff but optimize so the thing to keep in mind is don't get overweight because then you throw the whole sanctity of everybody off you know and what we have to do and, and then i have to write extra stuff for you to do after the gym before the gym we call that program mediums stuff you don't do at the gym but you better do and so for that reason i had to share that with you i love the, them little uh what happens eventually with those vices it will just come out of nowhere you won't feel it you won't know it the body just continues to change like when you first got a little peach fuzz you woke up you were like oh <laughs> oh yeah. oh and and it's the body never stops changing to the day you leave and that's exactly. one of the things that will happen so just stay conscious and and don't underestimate that day when it comes always be For prepped sure. and start cutting back on them sodas like you because you won't have a warning i'm just nah, saying yeah i know i want you to have a luxurious career i don't want a bad mistake to get you so be conscious of trying to find things to replace it because i love to drink a soda i drink teas and i drink herbal teas or very very listen i drink i, I oh, drink the also i drink the herbal teas also yeah the, the more holistic things i use a lot of original natural products so get mm -hmm. into that and I got a meal plan that I use for the athletes that they use outside of training camp that they can learn how to eat. So when they go to camp, they ready. So I'm going to gift that to you and send it to you. And you can, you and your dad can check it out look at it and see, it just allows you to really have some other options. And it's basically yep. you just replace them, stick with something. Cause one thing's going to happen. You're either going to do, what your mind tells you to do vicariously and we call that impulse which is always a bad idea or you're gonna have a plan so we just make sure that guys got plans so you ain't got to use it but it's just going to be something you have in case one day you you have that curiosity so you know i feel Thank like you. you're so smart and you'll enjoy the read i made sure there are a lot of pearls in there for you to take with you and win those moments so yeah for that reason all right back to this because this build up is happening you make weight what is the first thing you're thinking about your opponent when you see this guy tell me the kind of emotions that that guy sent through you if any at all when you saw his face what reaction did it give you first time i actually looked at him uh he was looking at me also made eye contact yeah and uh i'm one person that uh if we make eye contact i ain't looking away until you look away first and uh yeah. so i i stood my ground and he looked away and um you won that battle <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i don't know i, I don't they don't really send emotions through me i don't get nervous i don't get scared there's, there's no emotions it's just my and my mentality is i'm gonna go in there and i'm gonna hurt you and um that was the same thing going through my head when i seen him obviously uh for the, uh, I think the man above that we both came out came out the ring safely, um, but that's my mentality going to the ring. That I'm gonna hurt you. So that's the mentality I put in my head. Probably about two weeks before the fight, uh, I get into fight mode. Uh, tried to get into fight mode two weeks before the fight, but then yeah. once once we're at the fight, weigh and all that kind of stuff, I'm in fight mode. So I, there's no emotions going through my body. I don't let anything else 
bother me, nothing at all. Just fight. Okay. Well, I'm going to throw a question at you and, you know, just for Pete's sake. Dalton, what's up, champ? Good to see you, brother. And my man, Dion. Dion's out in Australia, too. Good day, mate. It's good to see you. Bless. Great program out in Aussie. When you start traveling, man, I'm going to make sure that you are connected with some of my coaches and you and your dad right. go out there and visit, man. We got, of course, it's obvious. You see, we got people all over the world and they're doing yes, good stuff. These guys are very good people to kind of like chop it up with and do some good training with. You and your dad enjoy that. Good quality people who are doing it right. Little things do matter, champ. So when you are getting ready to prep for this guy and mentally, you do know nervous energy is good energy and you channel it and you got to use it because if the guy doesn't, that's why one of the reasons when Errol Spence said, I got to fight somebody that's going to make me train. So I got to yeah. fight Danny Garcia. What about this fighter? Were you really thinking or may have raised some, you know, flags with you that you had to really be cautious of what was your father telling you about the guy that you wanted to be extra careful in certain areas or did you just go down with both hands down by your side the floor is yours no um, honestly we both knew that uh, edward had no power uh no mm -hmm. power at all um we knew that he was a slick boxer so we we knew we got to be uh careful with that his slickness uh the way he jumps in with punches he can be a, he can be there on the outside and just jump in with a punch so we, we knew we had to be careful with that so that's yeah. what we kind of pre we prepared for um but other than that no there was really nothing else uh instead of that I, I knew that i could sit there with my hands down on my knees and let him tee off on my head and he wasn't going to hurt me um not saying the kid can't punch but his punches just didn't hurt. And, they, and we knew he had no punch power. Um, well, you know, they, that, don't, they don't score punch power. They score punches. <laughs> they score pu Yeah, they definitely score punches. But we knew that he wasn't going to hurt me in the ring uh, is what I'm going for. Well, he, he wasn't going to hurt me with even, not, not with a body shot or not with a head shot. I mean, okay. I've been in the ring. I've been in the ring with uh, Daniel Riggin now. And uh, that's the only person. I, I put this on my life. That is the only person that's ever hurt me with a body shot. The Nero Rickendell. We were sparring. That boy hit me with a body shot, and it hurt. And I kept. I started to run. Um, so he I knew dangerous. that he's a dangerous yeah, man. He, he's a sniper. Yeah. Yes, he is. And mm -hmm. I, I just knew. I just knew going into this fight, Edward, Edward would, wasn't going to hurt me in the body. Well, neither would a head shot. So that's really what we prepared for. Um, coming from him and his aspect, he he's slick. And he jumps in with punches. What did you have the most trouble that night with with him? What when you went to the stool, you were like, oh, I can't let that happen again. Uh, it wasn't really him. It was more me. To no, be honest no, with you. no, no, no. What, let me rephrase the question. What could you not get off that you wanted to get off? My right hand, my right hand, definitely okay, my right hand. Back. All right, take us back to the, the beginning of the fight. You walk out, you fill them out. When I mean, did I walked you really out. Start when did you start saying, "I'm a, I need to land this right hand"? When did that start to take over that thought? So, I remember it was the first round. I landed a few jabs. We didn't for like I think a good like 15 seconds. We didn't throw a punch, but I started throwing my jab. I landed a few jabs. And um, then I threw a combination, and I knew it was the one-two. I remember I landed my right hand. When I landed my right hand, his leg stiffened up. And I noticed I hurt him because he started backing up a little bit. So And his leg, I seen his leg stiff. So all that, oh, boom, I mean, just jump on him. And I started landing combinations cleanly. Mm -hmm. um, I, after that round, he, uh, he survived it. Uh, after that round, went back to the corner. I was like, all right, I got to land my right hand, a right hook, something. Something was on the right side. Um, and I try, oh. I try landing it. So you started, uh, you started trying to land the right hand because you landed it after you. You do know you said you set it up. 
You started with. Oh yeah, no, I know. I set it up, but now that's what I want to do. I want to continue setting up, setting up right hand. Okay. And I kept pump. I kept pumping my jab. I think this okay. is probably one of the. This is probably. Uh, I threw my jab a lot this fight. Um, and I, I remember I me. Mean, I, I kept landing my jab, and I, I wanted to throw my right hand, and it, it, my right he would be out the way, or to be he'd be too far for me to throw that right hand. If I would have threw the right hand, it would have looked like I was uh, lunging a little bit. So I just never. I didn't throw it, or then when I did throw it. He he uh he slipped with it, so it didn't hurt as much or something like that. But um, that right hand was definitely would it would have been a factor if I would have landed it cleanly. Okay, so you're an experienced fighter, and you yes. have amateur pedigree. You went to the Olympic trials, yep. and so you understand what it's like when you're fighting a guy who knows you got something, and he makes an adjustment. For sure. Now you don't watch so video. You don't watch video nope. of fighters oh, for that reason exactly. So that means you came out of yourself. All right. There's a there's a, a reason that you do things that are not advantageous for you to do. Okay. So you came out of body because landing a punch and seeing how it affected him got you out of body. And that's why I say it's better to be nervous and because you're cautious, conscious constantly. So when you got the pedigree that you have, all you got to know is stay the same course. Don't let these get ahead of those because you don't box with your hands. You box with your feet. So no matter if you hurt the guy, daze him, get, buzz him. He's been in camp eight weeks too. He's been hit. So it's okay to go some rounds to really make sure you solidify this thing and chop them down over a court period of time. And I know your dad's already pounded you with this and the people that were closest to you have already said what I'm saying exactly. That it's patience. It's the jab. It's the legs that got to put you in a position at all times and change up speed of your punches. Okay. Cause that's where all of the fighters that fight, and hurt someone early that's where they go wrong all the time shane did it with floyd hurt him early bam bam three of the hardest punches i've ever seen in boxing and floyd goes nowhere you know but in the clinch time up hug him like his dearest love so at that point shane got out of body you know because before he was pacing nervous energy but he was still paying and then when he landed that big shot a lot of times, you know what I say? As soon as the dude land a big shot, I say, wow, let's see him blow it now because that's what usually happens. So that's a learning lesson because a bigger day is coming. So from that yeah, point, it's the, you're halfway through the fight. How are you feeling when you go back to the corner? Let me read this statement. Uh, Dalton Dam says, wait, nervous energy is a good thing? Yeah. I need, I, uh, I never thought about it like that. I get more excited than nervous. Yeah, it's nothing wrong with the excitement. It's all about channeling it. So it's more energy to channel if you're excited or if you're nervous. Channeling it and composure is the optimal thing. That's why Tyson's a better fighter. That's why he was able to go eight rounds after not fighting 15 years because he was able to channel it because he doesn't get emotional now. He doesn't go high. He doesn't get low. He stays right there. That's a skill set. It's called humility. No guy who beat him then could beat him now because he only lost to those guys because he was out of body. His skill set, his natural prowess, and then the physical attributes all come into play. And he never got out of sorts. And that's what you'll develop over time. That's why it's always good to go into those guys and pick them for their knowledge and things like this. So, yes, um, Dalton, being nervous or excited is a good thing when you know how to channel it. You got to have that Buddha consciousness. So I never prepared. I, I prepared for the fight. I just can't wait to step into the ring. But the thing about it is you got to get repetition and muscle memory on consciousness. It's all about a process in its chest, not checkers. Hurting a guy don't mean nothing. It's all about 
W's. Years ago, Sam Perkins was playing for the Lakers. He had graduated from North Carolina, went to the Lakers. James Worthy, Magic Johnson, and Bob McAdoo and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had just beat the Portland Trail Blazers in the Western Conference Finals. Sam Perkins went in there celebrating like, yeah, them dudes looked at him. And James Worthy said, what you doing, young buck? We don't – he was like, yo, we just want – he said, man, we don't celebrate conference championships. We celebrate the chips, NBA finals. That's key. I think you popped out for a second. Wi-Fi must be going in. It's been going in and out. And as long as you stay in the sport, you guys got to always remember that. That it's not about the moment. It's about understanding that there's a much, much bigger picture. Don't celebrate. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you now. I think it's popping back out. Don't concentrate nor celebrate when you are just getting little divots. Your objective is to get and secure the bag in boxing. And so there's so many of you who are so conscious to do those type things. And we want to make sure that that's not the case. So welcome back, champ. It's good Sorry. to see you again. That's all right, man. It happens. But you're not just saying it's all about don't celebrations happen when you, you got the chip. All right. Because everything else throws you off. I can look at an athlete immediately and tell if he's going to be successful or not. Your talent only going to get you so far. But can that do? Look at the people who are very, very successful. Look at LeBron. No highs and lows. Look at Russell Wilson. No highs and lows. Look at Tom Brady. No highs and lows. They stay meh, flat line. That is the skill set that people can't really obtain. So, therefore, you have the advantage over anybody that you get inside of the ring with. Always remember that if you can contain that energy, that animal that's inside, put the chain on them. Ah! When you can do that, champ. That's it, because eventually they going to come unravel. And that's when you're able to do that thing that you've really been working on, because they're going to go out of body. And it's a game of chess. Eventually, he might look like he ain't sleepy, but he going to get sleepy. And you got to just wait around to put him to sleep. Yep. My man. I love this. I love I love knowing that I know you're taking everything and all the stuff that you've already been told and you're applying it because that's the difference between an amateur who's been groomed since the early age until a, an adult. And uh, yeah, you just got to soak it in and uh, use that for your to your ability to your no. advantage. Yeah. Yes. Control is oneself. Yeah. It's the goal, man. And it's not easy. Cause you got a lot of a lot of things. Got to be relaxed with a clear mind during the, any fight. Yeah, but you're at a different level. You got to remember when you go up different levels of events, like the events, they're they're more taxing on people. I was very clear because uh, we had Berto and uh, some other somebody else was wanting to come, and I was like, "Look, oh Brooks, he's on the undercard of." Um, Errol Spence, he was supposed to come. I said, dude, you know, I know what the day is. The day is when media come in that joint, <laughs> all in your face. You can't, the coach, as a trainer, you can't get the necessary stuff out of the fighter because they got to kind of show off for the cameras and show off for the reporters. And with that, I was like, don't sweat it if you can't make it in. Uh, our objective is to make sure that you win your fight. And we can talk after the fight. So let me see, take a couple of questions. Yeah, being the repetition and strong energy and technique is key in the fight smart. But, yeah, it's easy to say that. It's different when you're actually having to 
do it physically be the one to go in there in the ring and actually do it so you always got to give respect to the people who position themselves to get there because they've already hurdled over so many things to get to that point. And so that's one of the reasons I told Irvin before that I appreciate whatever you overcame to get here. And because you had to overcome some stuff to get here to be able to be on that fight card, just always remember it's easy for somebody to stand on the outside and say it. What training drills do you have to help me do that? <laughs> you know, what put pressure on me and stuff. So you're in the fight. It's halfway through the fight now. You're in a position where you're looking across the ring from this guy. Are you seeing any signs of him having a level of overconfidence and how is your corner feeling? How is your father feeling? What is the energy inside of that corner when you're going back? Do you feel like you're delivering? Um, personally, I felt like I wasn't delivering. My corner uh, knew I had to do a little bit more. But we're, 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 the, our team is, uh, we never, even if I'm down in a fight, we never yeah. tell each other anything. We just make sure we stick to the game plan or we go to game plan. We have we have multiple game plans A B C D whatever it is yeah. we we move it along if if he tells me to start doing something different so I start doing something different yeah um that's our that's our that's our game plan uh I just like I said I go into that fight I listen to what my corner said I listen to what my father tells me to go out there and do um and that's how we go along uh, and that's how we that's how we became successful in in in, in my career yeah um, I go back to that corner. Okay, I do this. Okay, I'll do that. Boom. Go back out there, start doing what he told me. Yeah. If it's not working, if it's not working, adapt. You adapt. Uh like in in some in some of the rounds you see me go from orthodox to southpaw. Um adapt and trying to use something different, trying to see what what else will work for me. Um shooting my jab over his jab yeah. when I was a southpaw was, was working a little bit. Yeah. Uh try I was trying to trying to shoot that straight left hand in there. Um but then I'll go back to orthodox, and that's when you mix with the you mix with the fighter's head. No, oh, he's southpaw. No, he's orthodox, and they, you got them thinking so much in their head where you take you're, you're able to take advantage advantage of them. So when you got to that point, what was your takeaway? If you had to do it again, what do you say? Okay, this gave him trouble, and he couldn't adapt. What was that one thing? Was it just the switch, or what do you think that thing was? And what will you make sure you take with you the next time and build on it? It was it was it was obviously the switch, but it was definitely that uh, orthodox jab. He did not know what to do with that jab when I was on the outside, just pumping it, boom, boom, yeah. boom. But uh, I do like I, I do want to rematch. If like you said he watched the interview, I do want to rematch with him. So um, if we do end up getting a rematch, um, I'm gonna put something behind that jab, not just the jab, pop, pop, and start backing away or looking for something else. I'm gonna use that jab and uh, come come with something after that, uh, and stand outside more. Sit up, sit off the ropes. I, I I I don't know what was wrong with me, but I was on the ropes a little bit too much this fight. Um, stay off the ropes completely and use my it's distance. An, it's an opponent thing. You do things because whatever the opponent that's in front of you, everybody has a vibration. So certain vibrations make you do certain things. It was something that he was doing that caused you to end up on the ropes, which I tell the people act. My fighters say all all the time, make sure act as if the the ropes got or made a fire, and we execute a particular drill, and it's like a hot drill. So whenever people get close, we be like it's getting hot because you're gonna get burned if your back touch that rope. Everybody gets punished, you know what I'm saying? And so every time you touch the rope, unless you're setting up because we do these drills where we're working out of the shell and creating angles and showing people how to actually work on the ropes. But that's when you are much more experienced in boxing. He was doing something to take you back to the ropes. Was it the jab? Was it the body shots? Was it the pressure? What was it that, cause you gotta, you know, so you gotta open up and say it out loud. So you can address it to yourself when you go back to camp, so it won't happen again. Always remember that. I think it was his pressure and um, the way that 
he'd take take punishment and just keep coming forward. Yeah. Uh, that was that was definitely it. He he wouldn't back up for nothing. Yeah. Uh, and he was a definitely a, definitely a true Mexican fighter. Where you know those Mexican fighters, all they yeah. do is come forward and yeah. punch. That was, that's what he brought to the table, and that's what, that's what worked for him. Just keep opening the side door. Just keep turning them, and and you got to yeah. work. You got to get the most the strongest guy with the good conditioning in the gym. Uh, you, you know this already, but I'm just gonna reiterate it for our audience that are there because there's a ton of questions coming. Jesus, sorry guys, I'm gonna get to you questions in a second. Let me just when you when you get the guy to put you on the most uncomfortable areas, the corner against the rope and that's where your drills was you do 10 rounds just like that so you get used to learning how to get on the outside of that shoulder and turn them and then run light combinations on guys like that don't waste a lot of energy hitting them hard early because those guys are like bricks you touch them you touch them and all that's happening his oxygen is dissipating the moment his oxygen dissipates he starts to become like a uh a, a, a flail styrofoam and then when you start punching and dents start to go in them and now you can see the work and you can start seeing that that glaze over his eyes when you start hitting him like he starts yeah. to make an agreement with you all right i ain't gonna put pressure on you if you don't strike me no more with them with them joints so it's all about the repetition in that thing that he does best that you do all of those little things to take it away based upon the drills and the skills. So when you get that boy, because I believe when you say, when they saw you, they saw Alexis Arguello, and that dude was a problem. But then there's there Aaron Fryer. So there's an antidote. Mm. So you got to always be prepared for the worst nightmare. And the worst nightmare for Arguello was Aaron Pryor, and he couldn't figure yeah. out that puzzle. So... It's just all about you putting yourself in the position where when a guy coming at you, by the time it's fight night, that that's a fun drill for you. That when he comes, you just turn him and pop, 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 and run him up him and just slowly swell him up over rounds. That's what just happened with the tissue in the face. Eventually, yeah. it is, and then he starts swelling and bleeding out the nose and membranes start swelling. It's a medical deal. Then you start just peppering them and just play around and have fun. And that's all you do. And that's always my advice to guys whenever they're in a situation. Every situation has three answers to it. To totally change the whole entire thing. Simplify the book. Don't make it Chinese checkers. Don't make it calculus. Make it ABCs, make it one, two, threes. And that's kind of how we break it down in the school of boxing. Special shouts out to my brothers in the school of boxing who are here. We're here witnessing one of the up and coming prospects, soon to be a contender. You get that rematch, you get that rematch. What's gonna happen when you go into the training camp the day that sign, or just say, for instance, you have to take another fight before you get to that fight because he's he did what he had to do he sure. got away with the victory he found a way to beat you because you definitely not an easy w and he knows that now when you prepare and you go to camp what morsel do you take in the next camp and don't fighters do this all the time they try to say well this time you know, I'll throw more. No, because if the same vibration happens, you'll do the same thing. It's the wrinkle you got to add. What will that wrinkle be now that you know exactly what pushed you to that rope? And you got to just where you become a, a, a an elite level skilled fighter from an IQ perspective. What does that training look like? next time you go into camp to fight so like you so like you said um i'm not gonna change anything but i'm gonna obviously add some stuff uh add right. add add this stuff from staying off the ropes uh yeah practicing practicing sparring how to don't touch any type of rope there is in that ring stay in the middle of the ring uh moving around stuff like that um yeah. working on more working on angles better um I'm, I'm, I'm i think i'm pretty good on angles but obviously you can always perfect everything and uh, i haven't perfected that yet so 
How much Tampa, do you feel I like will. he weighed? How much do you feel like he weighed when he came in? Did he feel heavy? Nah. Uh, I did look at the paper before we went out there. Yeah. Uh, he weighed. I think he weighed one forty nine. That's what I seen him. One forty nine. Yeah. Ooh. So he's a big boy, and I only weighed one twenty seven. Well, um, you said he didn't feel heavy, but that's heavy. It is, but um, he a, he a, he a welterweight. Floyd didn't even weigh one forty nine when he fought Canelo. So I don't know if that's what I seen correctly, but that's I, that's what my eyes seen. Um, but no. I spar people at one forty eight. No, bro. Earth sparring ain't fighting. No, no. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. So, but, but what I'm saying he he might have been heavy, but that weight wasn't anything to me. That weight was it, it didn't mean much, and I. I'm the taller guy, so I was able to put my weight on him. And that, that's what I kind of try to use in my advantage. Okay, now what we call this is fact check. You may not, you may be able to do reps with the weight, but it caused you to give up and surrender your position in the ring. So it doesn't always have to be, I can't, just because I can't bench press it, I mean, just because I can bench press it doesn't mean it's not heavy. Like, I was 147. I could bench 285, right? I could do three reps of 285, which calculates up to 315. I mean, 325. That's density. Uh, uh, 10 more pounds of pressure per rep when you're up above 250. That's a natural calculation. That's how you can tell how much you can max without having to max. One of the things that was able to come away from him being heavy, yeah, you can still move him because you're longer and you know how to do a, a few things inside of the ring because you got experience. But what his weight was able to do is put you on the rope. Just because definitely, you're able to do that right. does not mean it didn't impact you. So just keep that in mind. Um, when you get very sophisticated about your negotiation, You'll see why people like Canelo put clauses in their contracts. You can't. Oh, I'm definitely gonna do. I'm definitely gonna do that the next fight. I'm gonna try to. So well, you got to get sophisticated. You got to make sure you. Some people got to really be doing some negotiating, and the right way because they can say, "Well, ah, uh, nah, we don't have to fight you." You know. So yeah. you also got to toe the line, and give something to get something. So it's on you to, to figure out what in return, whether it's a little bit of your purse. This is chess, not checkers. You're not trying to get while rich in one night. You're trying to accrue your position and get your face back. So exactly. I hope that landed uh, well with you. I'm going to take a couple of questions. Uh, Travel with Brandon said, if you can hold down a strategy to win consistently, hold it down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's 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 facts. Uh, real boxing, though, it just doesn't happen that easy. Uh, uh, other things come into play, and you you don't figure them out until it's fight night. Uh, there's no other at that skill level. The fight doctor. I appreciate that, man. I remember you used to say something similar all the time on YouTube. What I used to say. I'm gonna take you guys back, and this is just me. I just. Uh, for those of you who have never watched my channel, I like to introduce, before I get started, I like to introduce myself. My name is Eric A. Bradley, a.k.a. I'm the real fight doctor, and there is no other on this level. And I meant it because I do it for real, and I've got my stripes. 30 years in this game, learning, 45, real vested, 73,000 hours you can't tell me nothing, okay? So there are guys out here using Ferdy Pacheco's name, which was Fight Doctor. I took it back and I said, the real Fight Doctor and his family know it because that's a brand. You don't go out here, you don't know nothing about boxing. You can't call yourself a Fight Doctor. I'm a real one. So I had to check people. And that's one of the things, that was my adjustment. Instead of reaching out personally to this guy and saying something, what I wanted to make sure, all the, you can pull up, the word fight doctor on YouTube and it's like thousand. And I'm just like, Hey, we got to create separation. Y'all do not or have not earned 
a place in the fraternity of boxing and I'm a protector of it. And I got a, and I'm a sniper and I got a fat barrel and I don't play. So thanks man. I'm glad you remember that. I don't say it now because I don't want to send the wrong message, but when I have great guys like here, these guys up here, it's about them. And I'm going to really make sure you give me your, um, Instagram so I can get everybody up here to do a follow. And when I say follow people, I don't mean I'm going to put it on the screen and y'all don't go follow or give me your um, Instagram before we get going so I can keep it on the screen. Irv Gotti, I-R-V-G-O-T-T-I 21. No, 421. My fault. 421. Yeah. Cool. That's it. Nice. Yeah. So everybody make sure you Follow Irv because Irv has a pedigree. His father was a fighter. And that's what that's what I always try to share with everybody. Pedigree matter. <laughs> that's his college. His dad went to college. Now he's able to pass that down because he has experience. And there's so much to learn in this sport. Speak to it from just beginning to, to this point. People who are on outside, you get to see the YouTubers, you get to see the people on IG, you get to see Twitter, how clueless they really are about the sport of boxing, just, just from your perspective. They're very uh, clueless, you know, uh, they're not, they, they, they don't live this, they don't live this, they, they don't, uh, they, they're not in the gym every day, they've never been in, they've never stepped in the ring, they've never been punched in the face, uh, they've never punched somebody in the face, and um they don't know the struggles, the sacrifices that we have to make as professionals. Yeah. Uh, me. <laughs> Go ahead. It's good. It's good. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> me missing um Thanksgiving dinner with my daughter, and my family. Uh, missing Go ahead. It's going. My, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, me like like I said. Sorry, me missing Thanksgiving, Christmas, ho all the holidays, all the birthdays and stuff, and not being not being able to eat the sacrifices that we make is um different from other people, and they don't understand that. So they they just look at us like we're just somebody yeah. training off the street or something yeah. like that. It's it's very yeah. different. So they're very clueless when it comes to the sacrifices yeah. and the effort the effort we put in. And that's what we want to do. We want to give them clear, clear insight, everybody, on why this is very important that you pay attention to the, the real struggle. So we're going to go inside of these conversations and really let you hear. That's why I ask you real stuff about what in that corner, you know, it's the end of the fight. You walk out not being your own worst enemy or your own worst critic, but do you know you won? Do you know you lost? You know it's in the hands of the judges. Do you know you did enough to get the job done or were you like, ugh? No, I was definitely like, ugh. Yeah. Um, I didn't think I did enough to, to win over the judges. Um, my dad was like, yo, hold your head up. Me, now you got this. Like, he was being confident over there in the corner. But um, in my head, I knew I didn't do enough. Yeah. And then, and that's what that's what the judges showed. And then um, the same night, I went up to my uh, hotel room and I watched the fight over again. And then it put a different mindset in my head. I thought I did enough. I looked yeah. like I did enough. Yeah. Um, I thought it should have been either my fight or it would have been a draw but it was neither um mm -hmm. i left it up to the, i left it up i left it up to the judges i could have done a lot more which yeah. um i didn't and that was my mistake okay one thing i want to do for you okay i'm going to give you a because one of the things that just like people don't know about fighters people don't know about judging it's not what it appears it's not you're not judging entertainment then. When you're judging, you have a criteria. And it's not exactly what it sounds like when you say criteria, uh, effective aggression, ring generalship, oh, so on and so on and so forth. 
it's not just that. These guys have such a steady guideline, and and sometimes they have a bad night at the same time. But what they have to do, the education they have to get, they take serious. So they don't really care when people, you know, oust them about a decision because those people don't know how hard it is to do what they got to do. So I took a course to do it, to become an official just license for a season, just to do it, just so I can understand. And man, when I finished with that clinic and that sort of that, that, that licensing process, I was totally blown away. There is nothing that can remotely prepare someone who doesn't do that for real, it's, it's no way a fighter knows or a trainer knows. No coach can understand what these guys are looking for. It's no way. I mean, how they have to look at a fight is absolutely night and day of what you think they're looking at. So I'm going to bring on, I'm going to invite you to a, a, a Zoom call with us, um, Irv. Irv is still on. He's just in the in, in backstage and let you talk specifically with Haley Zell. She's an official. And I'll also introduce you to, hopefully I can get Ray Manderes up here, Armanderes, so they can really talk to you. And I got a clinic on video that we spoke to that with my guys in the school of boxing. Hey guys in the school of boxing, it is advantageous that you you know, take me up on that and really get a, a real bird's eye view of what they truly are looking at and how they're looking at it. Not just what they're looking at, because everybody knows the da, 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 but they don't understand what goes behind that da, da, da. OK, so that's one of the things that we're going to do. Yeah, man. Yeah, you definitely do. And it'll just give you perspective. And uh, I'll I'll share that 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 link with you so you and your father can look at one of them but uh i videotaped one that i did with usa boxing and i was like wow i did like i think it lasted I, my camera lasted 45 minutes because i was doing it with my phone so imagine that i recorded some for 45 minutes worth of and it was like oh man yeah but i wanted it that bad i wanted the at least the pearls and I knew how important it would be. So I'm going to take some questions until you can get your phone back up. Or pull up. Somebody said, got to be relaxed. Yeah, man, it, it definitely is. Um, and I want some predictions going because, guys, we're going to be we about to get on a prediction tip in a minute. Let me see. And if you can hold down a strategy to win. I don't read that one. Another one. Let me see. Practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. That's a good slogan, Dalton. We uh we live by that term, definitely. And practice ain't enough. On fight night, lost all sound. My end coaches, sure if it's me or everyone. Hopefully you can hear me now. Okay, no. Uh, one of our guys just said they lost all the sound. Is resolving the problems that opponent will present. Yeah. You know, but when you're in a fight, you're actually doing it. So uh, it's not in a, a, a process or a layout at that point that you're in the same frame of mind than when you're in a classroom setting, if that makes sense. Things are going warp speed. You got audience, you got crowds, you got a judge, you got referee, you got your corner yelling. You, you're thinking about your the the, the fans, what's happening. You might be swelling up. You might be feeling something. You got to manage your exhaustion. So trying to juggle 34 things at one time, it's a lot different when it's fight night. And I'm sure that uh, Irv will agree with that point. But it was, that, was a great, that was a great statement. Steve Willett out in Canada. Willett Boxing Club. TSOB. Shouts out. Special shouts out to my guys. These are the next generation of this generation to take over the sport in the right kind of way. They will all be going through their their um, exams and being officially introduced to all of the top sanctioning bodies for what they've achieved. So all the fighters who are out there in a the place where they need to learn that 
I'm going to be recognized for my accomplishments and achievement achievements. So it's important that you realize you will be because the ceremony is going to be off the chain. Absolutely. That was in game for me. So I made sure that I was going to bring something to the sport that gave you the same accolades as those. Sorry, I had to read this message. Gave something to the game that they have when you go to Brown University or Duke University or UNC or Syracuse ceremonies because you need something to show what you've put for. And that's what we're doing. So it's a beautiful thing to be able to do that. So that's what you get when you jump in and popping into the school of boxing. You're not just showing up. You're learning and you're being edified for what you do. Sam Jackson, what do you think of hitting and holding? Is it a loophole? No, it's it's work because it takes a skill to do that. And I was just explaining that last week in the post fight of Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. that working in the clinch is working in the clinch. It's just like when you see highlights or, or watching the MMA. People think because it's boring when you're watching them on the ground that is it's exhausting wrestling with a man. Punching when someone's trying to prevent you from punching them is tough. But you, if you understand uh, the sway and understand how to arm, uh, tie your arms and maneuver, there are so many different techniques when you learn as you get to the next level that we teach. Uh, so the guys will have an understanding that somebody's going to put you in this position or you're going to put yourself, put someone in that position where they're uncomfortable. It's a beautiful yep. strategy when you really know how to do it, when you really know how to create that space between hips, but work in the hips. And we practice stabbing shots because all you need is four inches to work. And you can really work. Roy Jones Jr. tell you those shots that Tyson was hitting him with was debilitating to his lower body and torso. Mm -hmm. And on the camera, it don't look like that. You get what I'm saying? So yep. don't get it twisted. Now, they won't that hard, but they are that impactful. So I got a ton of video. We don't show our real stuff until you are in the program or really vested. When you see that inside work that we do, we show some basic clinching. We show basic clinching. And when you start to get into like higher level tournaments, you learn how to clinch, pull score, and you know, debilitate your opponent with different techniques inside. And that takes a skill set. But you're talking about stuff that has been information that's been passed down a hundred years, not 30. Not 60, not my lifetime, but guys that were doing it before that point. And the recipe book to the science and sport of boxing is a Bible. Only certain people will get it. So just like I said to Herb at the beginning, his father got a section of that book. Think about it. We got three generations. Everybody's put over 40 years. So it put us over 100 years of that book being that deep, knowing these different things that are useful inside of a fight that people can't really understand when they see it is a powerful thing. That's why I speak so profoundly about the lineage of boxing. And I'm, I draw the line and I told the line for anybody who tries to skip line, you're not doing it. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm on the clock now. All right. And this is a movement. No more slipping in, no more creeping in. I'm at the door. Now I'm the bouncer. And uh, I'm nice with them things. Just to let you know. <laughs> and bottom line is this. That was a great question. But learn how to work inside. Because it's so much you don't know. There's an encyclopedia of just that. I, I mean, hand held high. When you look into that, we got a book just on that inside work thursday's our day all we do is inside training and it don't look like you guys is inside training trust me and when people come and they come and get that work they learn man it's levels i ain't never i'm talking world class cats all you ever hear is, i ain't never been worked inside like that 
Like for real, I ain't I ain't never felt that. And we always educate guys before they come in and spar. And Irv, you know this. If you in there, guys come to your gym or you go to gyms and guys ain't ready, you got to make sure this ain't the regular stuff you're going to get. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I, I don't put people in that position to be hurt. That's not mm – -hmm. I don't get a check for getting people hurt. So I always give people an option, and I say, um, here's a waiver, and I'm going to make sure that we're clear. Uh, if there's any holes in your boxing game, we don't suggest that you spar. We can do drills. We can do drills and, and give you an experience of what it's like to be in a totally educated environment. And that's what we do. And when people leave, they like, man, I done been to every gym in this country. And I've never felt like that. That was really, really insightful. And that's kind of what we try to do, man. And so that's a great question. My YouTube page is um, Master Boxing. I might have LLC. Just type in Master Boxing and Eric Bradley and you can find it. And, uh, you know, there's probably 10,000. Well, I shut down to like 6,000 videos because I had so many out. So I shut down a lot of proprietary content because when I was first starting it, I wanted just to get people, you know, in the know. And um, so I shut down a lot of it. So it's like probably over 2,500 videos. You know, uh, nobody can tell me I'm not serious about what I do. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, the numbers don't lie. So thanks, Chad. Chad Collins in the building. Where you from, Chad? Let us know. Coach Bradley, the real fight doctor. You put folk doctor, but I get your point. Uh, <laughs> now we, 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 we definitely want to put energy right here in the earth because Irv is carrying a torch or Irv off of a, a situation after the fight how, how did what did you say to your opponent i told him it was a great fight uh to keep at it um i appreciate him stepping in the ring with me and i'm glad that he came out um okay. unharmful yeah um and i told him congratulations after he won um and then other than that that was just it he yeah. told me that uh he was just happy for me to come out and be able to go home to my daughter safely which mm -hmm. i really appreciate from him yeah um beautiful yeah that was pretty much it. Okay, so I'm going to give you a pearl. When you're in that moment, you're like, you know you want a rematch. A yeah. good thing to do is to land in his future thoughts. And how you do that is set it up. You say, I know you got, you know, the victory tonight and, and congratulations. You'll be moving forward. You don't have to offer me another opportunity but it was, it was gracious to be able to share the ring. I'd be willing to do whatever it takes to um, set it up. You know, you definitely, the A side, the negotiations will be smooth. If you have any hurdles in your road and you can't get things going the way you want to, I will be available for you. I'm going to leave it in your corner. You know, take your time and whatever. And once again, it was it was a pleasure doing business with you. That's it. And you let it. So one night he's going to be nice. He had the crib and they got to chop it up and, and things ain't going to go right in boxing. That's the boxing. For sure. It's going to really consider it because of the manner in which you operate it. And people are in our sport are not used to having great communicators. No. <laughs> I That's may not I be. An ambassador of verbal linguistics, but I promise you this: I know how to communicate with people, and mm -hmm. he will push the envelope when they in that 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 room. You know, I call it the foxhole. He'll push the envelope to, hey man, you know that's the kind of experience I want to have in boxing. I want to be able to deal with fight and be in the ring with people who respect the the hell out of me. And what I stand for. So um, that's enough to make a person push the envelope. Don't press it. Just allow him to have an opportunity to nurture it. Not I want to rematch because ain't nobody nurturing that energy. People don't want to yeah. be around bad energy. So leave the energy good and memorable and stay present. You know, stay present. For sure. And I will be. I'll be present. 
Yeah, stay present. And let me see uh, other questions I got on my gym wall. I have be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah, I saw that, man. You got a beautiful gym. He got a beautiful gym out in Australia. I tell you, you got to go out there and visit these guys. He just got it. He has a beautiful story. I will be putting it up on the Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. If you don't mind, Dion, uh, your story is amazing. And I appreciate that you pay homage. Uh, for me, it's all about what are you doing? All those kids, how many lives you changing, man? Look, <laughs> I, I got a co-sign on that in ink. I mean, this dude is doing it, man. So what we're going to do is let me see the rest of what he said. It's a road to him and his father who coached. Yeah. Me for a long time. He used to finish my training by, by me doing rounds on the ropes while he worked me. Yeah. He would say, don't lose your technique. Absolutely. Can't lose your technique, baby. That's the only thing you got going. Now what we're going to do is just get your fight prediction for the fight coming up, man. And then we're going to let you ride. We done, we done rocked it for like an hour and a half. And this was easy. I could talk to you all day, <laughs> man. you good conversation. Thank you, thank you. So what do you see coming up with this fight with Errol Spence and my man? Yeah. Oh, really? um, I'm going to have to say that Spence is going to win the fight. Okay. Uh, I'm going to. I'm a huge Spencer and Garcia fan, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, yeah. Gar I'm Puerto Rican. Garcia's Puerto Rican. So I'm going to be rooting for Garcia, but um, I, I really think Spencer's going to pull it off. How would that fight look? It's, I think it's going to be very technical. Um, I think uh, Spencer's going to dig to his body. And um, one thing that's going to work for Garcia is his left hook because, you know, he got devastating left hook, and I think that's going to be working for him. If he lands it correctly, if, if Spence is going to the body, that, yeah. that left hook's that left hook's gonna be there. So how um, does that all play a role in that left hook to the body? You think it's gonna be more effective since Spence is a southpaw? When Danny throws um, the left hook? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, definitely. that was that was a toss-up question for you. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I, had, I don't know why I had to think about it so much, but yeah, yeah. yeah it's right. gonna be way easier. Yeah. And that, yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's gonna be a really good fight, to be honest with you. I can't wait for it. Yeah, it's gonna be insane. Um, Spence looks big. I, I was telling you know uh Stacy that he looked like he's grown taller, he just looks long, <laughs> he looks strong. And that's what a fighter looks like when he's living it. He's not pudgy yeah. in social media. He's not loaded with Coca-Cola, soda pop. Yeah. <laughs> he's living it and it's showing he's got a ranch. He's living that life. But when I tell people we have the segments on the fight show and everybody is kind of, they weigh in and I'm not going to hold you up anymore. But when it boils down to it, who do you think needs this more and who wants it more? Uh, I think, uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough question. Because I, I think they both wanted the same amount. Um, I was watching, I watched a few videos. Um, yeah. I, I think they both wanted the same amount. Um, but I think... Uh, Spence may need it a little bit more than uh, Garcia does. Garcia got a name. Garcia's been there. Garcia's been in there with the best. Spence has been in there too. Uh, Spence has a name, but um, I think this would just boost, boost Spence's career even more. Okay. Well, I, I put it in the terms of this. I think uh, Spence wants to redeem and, and prove himself. And he also exactly. wants, he wants to play Pac-Man. He wants to get all of those pack pellets that's over at PBC that have been yeah. in a position where he's been buying to get for all this time. And I feel like that motivation and the fact that Danny stepped into the ring and called him out puts a little fuel in his fire. And the fact that he had to wait because he did get in the wreck to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So I think he got a lot of stuff pinned up and I think that's going to fuel him and the way he looks in camp. Now I talked to his sparring partner and the guy that's going to be on undercar undefeated fighter, um, Berkey Brooks. 
and Burley Brooks. And so I know from the inside and he putting in 14 and 18 real rounds and Burley is a 168er. So he definitely walking around at 180 something and, and Spence putting in work with him. Lots of rounds. So I think he's very motivated. I think Danny Garcia is very motivated. I feel like it's edged out a little bit because I think it's three or four things that have Spence redeemed and motivated. But I think one of the things that I put up uh, that you be conscious of this and it doesn't it does not have a lot to do with this for a lot of other boxers, but Danny Garcia got the opportunity to feel what it's like to have a strength trainer. Now this doesn't apply to every fighter, but with a slick Philly style, banger style that Danny Garcia has, because he's smooth with how he fight and that he got a strength trainer. His, his output is higher. So it's helped him in other areas because he already strong. If you ain't heard been in an arena when Danny Garcia or in a training camp with Danny Garcia and heard him hit somebody, it ain't nothing like that. It is <laughs> nothing like that sound. His sound, he, he highlights the arena with his punch power. And that's why nobody stands in there and bangs with him. Nobody. Go look at his all his fights. Everybody moves. So I expect Spence to be to move and be sharp. I expect Dan Danny Garcia to be so dangerous because he got that strength trainer. And for a guy who already has power, he didn't get a strength trainer for power. He got a strength um, trainer to improve his output. And man, he did. <laughs> Because his last two fights, they 2-0 and o together. 4-2, to yeah. two, you know Danny. Danny just don't go down. He's been in there with Matisse. He said, I pissed blood. First time in my <laughs> in my life I to fight Matisse. So he overcame some stuff during that fight, them body shots. So that's it, man. Uh, prediction? Who wins the fight and how? Spence. And by decision. Okay. But you're pulling for for you pulling for Danny. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Well, that's what's up with send our fans a shout out and the fight show a shout out. And then we're gonna uh allow you to go play and, and get back to your that mental. And uh give us a shout out, man. The mic. Oh, you just yeah, you froze up. <laughs> shout out to you guys, uh shout out to uh Fight Club, everybody over there. I appreciate all the love. I appreciate. I'm I'm honored to be on the show, and I'm honored for you guys to be following my career. I'm gonna be following you guys and everything you guys post and whatever you guys do in the future. I'm gonna be right there with you guys. You guys are uh, in it for life. I'm in it for life with you guys. Absolutely. You guys. I'm gonna be looking forward to um making sure everybody's following and following up with you on. Uh, allowing you to look at that content and I want to chop it up with you guys with you and and uh, one of the judges that'll give you some good insight from the inside so you'll have an advantage it's all about the homework it's all about the homework about giving homework so be blessed at Godspeed we'll be seeing you again continue blessings and you'll be hearing from us soon thank you you guys you know much love peace brother that's a good dude everybody when you got a formidable people like that in the game, it's easy to do what we do. And uh, it's obvious that he wants to make sure that he accrues enough knowledge so when he finishes, he can train. And I told him, of course, he can come over and we can definitely give him some insight on how to go about that in the school of boxing. So for those of you who are in that game trying to learn, you want to be a trainer, you want to get it done the right way, you got to be smart, man. This game is tough, and you definitely don't want to run up against uh, people who've been trained the right way because you can see all of that work we do is for something. It's not for nothing, and the game of boxing is a, is a precious jewel. Treat it like a gem, but some of the things that you'll see over the fight, this segment here is just basically how we uh, operate 
and things that you should use if you're training and you're working hard with your athletes or if you're an athlete trainer here once again i show you some of the stuff that i recommend one the thing that i was talking to him about is this freaking science of the run make sure you have something to help you with your cardio that gives you insight to it and not just oh well i'm just going to the gym don't do yourself that do a, do yourself a service what this does is i spoke to irv about understanding the cardiovascular network how to actually meet the call of duty when it comes down to your condition and is understanding what's going on in the body the amount of liters of blood being pumped through your body how do you increase that without breaking the body down at the same time, because you're going to run across injuries. You're going to run across uh, different nicks, things that's going to pull you from training. So be conscious, stay conscious. I think that link will be in the description. And uh, not this, but another good thing for you to take with you is, I think, is that, sh that, that the skill set that will really help you in the time of need don't go on this page what i see a lot of you guys doing and forcing yourself to try to learn stuff because i had a guy reach out about the philly shell you cannot jump in the box and talking about the philly shell i just want you guys to really understand that hence is why we are pulling all of our downloads from being purchased on the site. And the only way to access any training outside of basic is through the course because you don't understand what you're doing now. If there are guys out there who are in the game and they already got us in a system that's complete, then you can take and add wrinkles. But if you don't have a bevy of boxing knowledge and I ain't talking about shadow boxing in your bedroom you cannot order things on our site because we are not going to do a disservice to the game for some pennies it's not worth it I'm doing good I'm doing great I don't I'm not going to sell the sport out just so you can just own something it's not the right thing to do it's not the right way to go about it so just putting that in your mind so it's so you stay conscious and do the sport justice with your skills training uh another great tool that we suggest that you guys use for shadow boxing and bag work are the power hands the power hands you get if you haven't looked at some of the videos go type in power hands and master boxing you know simultaneously and check out kind of what they do, how I use them, how our fighters use them. Uh, that weight is cool. So check them out. I mean, those are my suggestions. I always try to give it to you straight and raw. You're always looking for information. Some of the questions I get, it just tells me that you may not understand how serious the sport is, but if you're going to train, you're working with people, power hands is great, man. Let me see predictions. On the fight coming up this weekend, baby, it is time to box with Errol Spence versus Danny Garcia. For those of you who chimed in late, I want to see your comments in the comments, and I want to make sure that I got you on the record. Once again, if you do not have a Twitter account, start your Twitter account because we will be soon chiming hard on Twitter after the fights and during the fights that's kind of it that's all i got for right now for those of you who have inquiries about the school of boxing make sure you reach out the website the school of boxing.com for more information on the school and for those who are in the school get ready for your ceremony get ready for the next quarter in the school of boxing you're going to be seeing some amazing new threads go down and it's going to be very insightful it's going to be awesome to have uh 
And I got to make sure I shout out to those customers who are currently, sorry, those guys who stepped it up. And we like to shout everybody out no matter where you're from. So right now we got to give a special shout out. And I know about you. I got some Olympians. Oh, oh gosh, there's Olympians that are jumping on board, trying to learn how to do it the right way. And we want to give encouragement when it's all said and done. That's what we're here for. We're not just here to give you that kind of stuff. Hey, take a video. We want to make sure that we galvanize all of these guys, these guys that I put on the screen, the coaches, the teachers, the trainers that are all in a bevy. We've created a beautiful fraternity of great minds. And we want to make sure that when you're learning, you're learning, not just having something stuck in the back of your head just for keep sake, but you're actually building upon it because it takes that. Gerald Swartz from Pennsylvania, special shout out on the fight show from your host, Coach Eric A. Bradley, aka the real fight doctor. Let me see Troy Manning of Australia. Thank you again. Another hopefully super satisfied customer. We will be giving all of these guys 30% discounts on your next purchases and also. We were going to give you a trial inside of the school so you can see what it feels like to be amongst others who have learned or learning to become great teachers in the sport and all of the beautiful things that come along with that. Next, James Brown, New York's in the building. Special shout out, New York. What part of New York next time? Make sure you let us know where you're from. We like to call out every, it's five boroughs, so... Let us know. Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Staten Island. Where you at? Troy Miller from Grand Junction, Colorado, I think. Shouts out, James. I mean, Troy, special shouts out from the School of Boxing and special shouts out from the Fight Show. Shay Bitten from Israel. You see how we bring in the globe together? Just beautiful bridging. Just bridging the gap between the worlds. It's a beautiful thing. It just gets, gives me goosies, man. Gives me goosies. Christopher Jack Dagina from Arizona. Interesting name. Very cool. I wouldn't put that with someone from, the, from Arizona, but very cool. Thanks again for being a customer. We thank you guys. I know you spend your hard earned money and we want to make sure that we deliver. So always feel free to reach out to us. And remember, customers never fret to touch base with us because we, we work for you. Tammy Volke, Finland. Finland's in the building. Tammy, special shouts out from Coach Eric A. Bradley, The Fight Show, all of the followers and fans and our entire staff. We thank you. James Maynard, Georgia. James Maynard, special shouts out from Team Master Boxing. Thank you for being dedicated and owning your craft and trying to increase your cachet. We are here for you 1,000%. We don't just say it and we can't speak it loud enough. Uh, Camille Xavier, France. France is in the building. Xavier, Camille, thank you for taking the time to entrust in us, visit our website, pull out your card and invest in your destiny. That is commendable behavior. So for that, we shout you out. Alex Best, London, the UK in the building. We got a ton of people over in the UK. So special shouts out to the UK. Everybody over in the UK, even some of these top athletes, the elitists of athletes in the game, and those who are on the come up, the youngsters, special shouts out from the Fight Show and Coach Eric A. Bradley, Team Master Boxing, and the School of Boxing, and Chris Marin from New Jersey, Jersey in the house, East Coast in the house. That's kind of what we're doing making waves in the game people we don't isolate and choose people who spent the most we just 
make sure we edify a group of the people and let you know that you're important to us and we want to be uh, a, a comfort zone for you where you can we can eliminate your stresses because I know how tough it is to train. I know how tough it is to go into the gym and not have your curriculum the way you want it. And I understand it, man. So we have the necessary tools for you. If you're young, you're learning, or if you're older and you're learning how to do it and you want the process, just, you know, we got you. We got more than enough. The thing about it is you got to have the attention span to stick to the process. And that's my message to you now. Leave your comments. Let us know who you're pulling for in the fight. I love reading stuff when I, when I see somebody really drop some real knowledge. So drop some pearls. Do you think Errol Spence is coming back to make a statement? Or do you think that this is the time for Danny Garcia to let those boys know over at PBC that he is the top gun? Drop it in the comment box. Be tuned for the post-fight show. Until next time, continue to be blessed at God's speed. We signing out. So long and TSOB. Mad love. It's time to take the game to the next level. Peace.